Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. How are you doing this week? We hope that you're having a wonderful summer and that you're getting to go places even though a lot of stuff is closed. But we hope you're enjoying yourselves being safe. We do. <coughs> and we're back with our disciple, our hero in Christ, Paul, who has been on journeys spreading the word of God. And today we're going to pick off where we left off last week. Uh, if you'll recall, he was on a ship and it was kind of a treacherous trip. So Woody, would you bring us up to speed on this? Well, as Julia said, last week Paul was on a ship and it was very stormy. Uh, the ship uh, was run aground, and that's where we left you mm -hmm. last week, mm -hmm. with the ship being beached. And this week, we're going to, or in last week's lesson, there's three important things that we learned through the actions of the um, people aboard ship and the fact that they ran the ship aground. And I think what we want to do is kind of recap those. The first thing we want to remember is that God can lead us out of areas that we feel very comfortable in. Paul wanted to stay in uh, a place called Fairhaven because it was winter time and he knew the seas would be rough. So he was all for staying in Fairhaven. But God had a different plan and a different time schedule. So secondly, we see that God always keeps his promise, though, because if you remember in the height of the storm, after 14 days, uh, an angel came to Paul and said, everybody's going to be safe. The ship will be lost, but no lives will be lost. And God, uh, Paul had faith in God's plan. And so he accepted what the angel said, and he boldly witnessed to everybody else aboard ship. Remember, there were 276 people aboard ship. And he shared his vision that the angel gave him and told them what would happen and how it would happen and had complete confidence that God would see him through it. And thirdly, what we learn is that we're not always going to feel safe in dangerous situations and that's okay and in many cases we should be on edge in dangerous situations but we shouldn't become so frightened that we forget who's in charge we know that God if we depend on him and call upon him will see us through the most difficult and frightening times of our lives uh, but there's nothing wrong with being a little scared when you're in a dangerous situation. It's probably very wise to be. But not so afraid that you forget who Jesus is. And the go to him in prayer, and he will see you through. So now this week, Julia, this week will you lead us in prayer? I will. I will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these lessons. We thank you for the time it gives us to focus on your word, to dig a little deeper, to revisit lessons maybe we've studied before, but most of all, to share it with each other. We're sharing with the kids and their families. We're sharing it with anybody who's watching on YouTube, and we're sharing it with each other. And we appreciate the time, Lord. We appreciate the lessons we've learned. We appreciate knowing that even when things are a little uneasy, you're with us. And we appreciate knowing that you will keep your promises. And that um, even when we don't feel 100% and maybe facing some danger, we are going to lean on your promise to watch over us and to keep us in your will as long as we keep uh, you in our sight. So we ask you to help us learn in this lesson and keep our hearts and our ears open to what you'll be telling us through it. We pray this in Jesus' name. And then we say a little amen at the beginning. Amen. So this week lesson, we're going to see that Paul and all of the ship passengers mm -hmm. swim to an island. 
It turns out the name of this island is called Malta. Malta. And in this week's lesson, we will learn what Paul does while he's on the island of Malta. He's there for three months. So it gives him a great opportunity to be a bold witness for Jesus. Now, we're going to start in Acts 28, where I'm going to read verses 1 and 2 to begin. It says, Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta, and the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome. Because of the rain that was falling and because it was cold, so, tell me again, what's the name of this island? Well, the island they landed on is called Malta. Malta. And just as a history footnote, Malta played a very important role in World War II. Hmm. Same island. So, they had to swim. That was nice kind of balmy Mediterranean seas, oh. young and warm water? No. Nope. It was very cold. It was winter. So the water was probably in the, I don't know, maybe 60s, mid-60s, low 60s. Kind of like Half Moon Bay water. Kind of like Half Moon Bay water. <laughs> now, I can remember when I was a youngster, just at 14, 15 years old, we would go surfing in Southern California year-round. And in the wintertime, it was really cold out there. But you had wetsuits. No, they didn't have any wetsuits in those days. The most you could get was a wool sweater, and most of the time you didn't have that. So when we would get done swimming, it was very nice to come up on the beach to one of those big concrete fire rings and have a blazing fire going because you could warm up your toes and hands, which got really cold during the winter. Just like the natives have. The natives of that island have Just for Paul when they... Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so... So how does all this tell us how God keeps his promises? Well, we see that there were 276 people on the ship. Mm -hmm. They all got to the land safely. Mm -hmm. They were well received by the people. Mm -hmm. uh, they were being provided for. Mm -hmm. So God kept his promise when he said nobody would be hurt, ship would be lost, mm -hmm. and the ship was lost. Mm -hmm. But the people were not only safely on the island, they were receiving warmth, they were probably receiving food, they were being well cared for. So is it possible for God to break a promise? No. God, the, the one thing that's impossible. It's one thing that we know is impossible. That God cannot break a promise. Okay. So reading on, verses 3 and 4. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice has not allowed him to live. A viper. That's a snake. What does it mean when they say he fastened the viper fastened onto his hand? Well, it means he bit him, sunk his fangs. Vipers have two fangs. Boom. Ugh. Hurts. What did Paul accidentally pick up when he was picking up these sticks? It was a viper. A viper. We, 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 we kind of covered accident. that pretty well. And, and lest you don't know, a viper, it is a snake, and it's a poisonous snake. And it can make you, the bite can make you very sick. Or it can kill you. That's true. It's true. Do you think that we should stop doing good things because bad things happen when we do good things? Oh, like getting bitten by a snake when yeah. you're trying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think we should stop. I think we should try to learn any lessons, like when you're picking up firewood, watch out for snakes. And I, I think that learning lessons is a good thing. Um, but I, I don't think we should just stop, especially when we're trying to walk with God. 
and the, when we're, the tasks that we're doing we believe to be in God's will and would be pleasing to him, I, I don't think we stop. I think he, we trust him to help us um, find a way that we don't get bitten by snakes, um, but that, that we continue to show God's love to other people. Yeah, that's, that's true. Now we read on in verses 5, starting in verse 5, excuse me. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down, dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Now, we know Paul didn't think he was a god. We know Paul knew why he didn't come to harm, and that was because of Jesus Christ. And we've heard this before. We heard when people witnessed Paul healing that they thought that he was a god. And Paul has always been very careful in our readings to make sure people understand that he is not a god, that he's a, he's, he's a man. Um, so when, when the snake bit Paul, what did the islanders think? Well, they thought Paul was a, had done something wrong, that he was uh, some, uh, maybe a murderer. They called him a murderer in the Bible. And, uh, you know, we have to guard against, just because somebody has afflictions or a difficult time in their life, we have to be careful that we don't judge and think, well, he must, you know, he probably deserved that. He, you know, God's mad at him. Well, God doesn't get mad at us. God loves us. And judging us is God's job, not our job. Correct. Yeah. So tell me why bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people because we're people and we live in the world. Uh, just because we're Christians and because... We worship God does not prevent us from having difficulties come in our life. And in a lot of times, the difficulties that come into our life help build our Christian faith. Mm -hmm. and our tra we learn to trust more and more and more in God. Good point, this. Moving on, in that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. As it happened, that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery, and Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. Now, what was the man's name? The man's name was Publius. It's difficult to pronounce. It, it is, it, especially when you're looking at these letters, but I think that's how it's said. My, my Bible shows me right here how to pronounce the name. And I think one Sunday we're going to have a lesson on how to pronounce biblical names. I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure we're going to teach anybody anything, but we could try. <laughs> uh, what happened when Paul laid his hands on the man? He, God used Paul to heal him instantly. Ah, that's the key. Instantly. God used Paul. It was nothing Paul did. That's right. It was God working through Paul. That's and we right. we need to always remember that when we hear about people. Again, we have talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and some people are given the gift of healing. Uh, and it's not for us to say who is and who isn't. But... Uh, Remember, if it's a, it can only be of God, it, and if it's of any other reason, then it's fake. Now, going on in verse 9, we read, So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had disease also came and were healed. They also honored, so they honored us in many ways, and when we had departed, they provided such things as were necessary for their trip to Rome. That was very nice of them. 
Yeah. Well, how, how did he spend the rest of his time while he was on the island? Doing what Paul does best. He's a missionary. He was spending his time spreading the good news of the gospel. He was witnessing? He was witnessing. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the Old Testament, we in the early Old Testament, in, in, uh, as we read in the <clears throat> early part of the New Testament, there were so many uh, miracle healings because God used those people to heal, to show his power. Okay. Okay. So, Paul is on the island preparing, waiting to go forward to Rome, as we learned last week. He's going to Rome because he had been accused of some things, <coughs> and the local king couldn't find him guilty, but Paul wanted to go before the Roman emperor, Caesar, because he was a Roman, Roman citizen. So he, he left Malta, the, he got back on the ship, it sails again, and all the passengers that traveled with him across the stormy seas were on the, on the vessel, and they all went on to, to Paul, to uh, Rome. And in Rome, He's delivered the centurion, if you remember, that's kind of the, the captain of the Ca boat, right? Captain of the guard. No, the centurion it's delivered. The... Yeah. Okay. So the centurion delivered Paul to the chief guard in Rome, and Paul was permitted to dwell by himself. He had a guard with him, but he wasn't among all the other prisoners. And after three days, he called a meeting, and he was still a prisoner, but he wanted to talk to the local Jewish leaders. And so he asked them to come meet with him, and he wanted to explain why he was in Rome. And he talked to them from morning until late at night about the Old Testament scriptures that spoke about Jesus Christ. And some of them believed that Jesus had actually come, and some of them didn't. Not everybody who heard his teaching believed. And then as they were leaving, there was much disagreement. Of course, some believed, some didn't, so there would be disagreement among them. They left. For the rest of his time in Rome, Paul stayed in a rented house. He was there for two whole years, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus. And this story is to be continued. Indeed. In another couple of months, we'll pick up what happened to Paul as his final days in Rome come to an end. But that's a story for a different time. And, and we're going to spend some time in the Old Testament again before we return to the rest of that story. So today's lesson, we learn three things again. Mm -hmm. Bad things happen to good people. They certainly can. We know that. That doesn't mean that God is unhappy or punishing them. And the third thing is God will provide for us and will keep his promises. We can always claim and know in our hearts that whatever God promises, he will fulfill. So, Julia, would you lead us in closing prayer? I will. I feel like the book ends on prayer here. I opened up, but I will absolutely close up too. So, Jesus... Thank you for this time. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the materials that we have that we can share in this time of being separated and quarantined. We ask that you use those materials. You ask that you use this video that we make and teach with it, Lord. You teach us as we prepare the lesson. We pray humbly that it is sufficient to do your work. That is, it is sufficient that those who listen to it are taught, that they are blessed by it, Lord. Um, we were certainly blessed in the making. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your promises. And we thank you for you being present with us when times are difficult, when we're scared, and for letting us know that we are safe in your protection, even though times can be scary and dangerous sometimes. So we lift up this message. We lift up this week, these children, congregation in our community and we ask all this in Jesus name Amen Amen 
next week. Bye.